The very first game on Chess.com was aborted. Thank you for watching. So technically this is the second game, but in reality this is the first real game that was played on Chess.com. It took place in 2007 when Instagram and WhatsApp did not exist. Andereza Firuja was not the highest rated Blitz player in the world, because he didn't know how to play chess. Anyway, let's get right into the game. Playing wide is Eric Elbest, who is the CEO at the time and founder of Chess.com, and playing black is some random chess player. Eric opens up with pawn e4, pawn d6, d4, knight f6, the perk defense, knight c3, pawn g6, bishop e3. Here white's plan is to play queen d2, creating this battery along this diagonal which enables white to play bishop h6 sometime in the future, trade off this bishop and hopefully attack black's castled king. Black castles kingside, white plays pawn f3, it's a part of white's strategy, that move takes away the square so that black's knight can never jump there, and also in the future white may push a pawn there and they start his pawn assault on the king side. Therefore f3 is part of the plan. Black plays knight to d7. Which is an okay move, black kind of develops pieces, but in these type of positions where you expect both sides to castle in the opposite directions, very often it's advisable to seek counterplay early in the game. So a lot of the players who are more experienced play pawn c6, b5 and start their own counter offense on the other side of the board. Anyway, knight d7 is fine, it develops a piece, so that's okay. White castles queenside, pawn e5. Black tries to do something in the center of the board, which is also nice. And here pawn h4, uh, white starts his classical attack on the king side. By the way, it's the very same way like white attacks in the dragon variation of the Sicilian defense. So one wants to play h4, h5, trade off the pawn, play bishop h6 and checkmate black along the h file. And Fisher said about this plan that it's so effective that even amateur players defeat GMs just by following this plan. Of course it's not all that simple and black also has something to do here. Anyway, the game goes on. Black played here upon b6. And we can see that black player just continues developing his pieces, he sees that the bishop needs to be developed and he wants to put it to b7, which is a normal idea, that's what classical chess tutorials tell you to do, in an opening you get a castle, develop minor pieces. This is exactly what black is trying to do, so I am not don't want to be too harsh on black. But in terms of planning, once again, you gotta figure out what's going on here. White is trying to attack here on the king side, and this is quite dangerous, and black needs to address it somehow. So I would say that black usually needs to either play c6, b5, b4, c counterplay on the queen side, or if you don't want to do that, at least black may try playing h5. It's a bit risky move because, you know, it a little bit weakens the king, but nevertheless it blocks this h pawn, physically it can't move forward. And if white wants to break open with g4, that'll mean that they have to sacrifice a pawn, and that just makes it not that easy for white. So I'll have to consider that, or some players will not play that move at all, and black will at least slow down white's attack. So I would say that you have to either counterattack or play h5 and slow down. So, but it's a little bit more advanced stuff, I, I got it, b6 just aims to develop these. Okay, g4. Eric wants to play h5 in a comfortable situation where this pawn can not be captured. That's also fine. Black goes bishop b7 and now h5. And in this, at this point, black's position is already quite tough. White expands on the king side, and it's not that easy for black to decide how to counter that. But anyway, of course, black can still defend. Queen e7. Finalizing the development. Black kind of funnily enough plays all the classical book moves, you know, developing pieces, castling, connecting rooks, developing a queen. It's all nice, but just a little bit too slow. White plays pawn takes g6, and now black has a tough choice. If they recapture with the h pawn, which they didn't do in the game, that opens up this h file. And that's exactly what white wants. So white wants to go bishop h6, trade off this bishop, and then infiltrate with their own queen, and deliver some checkmate on h8, you know, that way. So that's what black didn't play in the actual game. In the actual game he recaptured by the f pawn. And that's better, but that opens up this diagonal and white takes advantage of that by playing bishop c4 check. Now the king is forced to the corner of the board and here white played yet another good move, which is actually quite cool. I mean white player I can see he's rated 1300, but he's playing really good chess here, knight h3. The knight aims to go to g5 and from there it's gonna put pressure to h7, potentially f7, e6, it's a really juicy square for the knight. Black traded in the center, he tries to do something, knight goes to e5, attacking this bishop on c4 as well as the pawn on f3. And here white played bishop e2, which looks passive to me, white had a really massive attack on the king side, so I think it would be better for white just to trade it off and follow along with his plan knight g5, 
White's attack looks pretty deadly here. Bishop b2 is kind of passive, but White's position remains to be very good. Black played knight to f7, which covers the square g5, therefore White can no longer just enter the square. But strangely enough, knight f7 allows White to reroute the knight in another direction. White played knight f4, and Black here played rook d8. He didn't notice what White is going to do. So rook d8 blunders the move, which is knight takes g6. Quite a sudden move, actually. Like, it's not that expected for white to take advantage of the pin along the h-file, and yet that's what happens. You'd probably expect white to play g5 and just attack in a more traditional way, and that would be good for white, but, you know, knight takes g6, of course, just kind of wins the queen here, because the pawn can no longer capture the knight because of the pin, therefore king has to move here, knight takes c7, grabs the queen with a check to the king, king goes here to h8, and here after g5, black resigned. He's a queen down, and white continues attacking. Nevertheless, let me actually ask you a question about this. So what if knight goes here to d7? Because if knight goes to g8, that could lead to this really nasty checkmate with knight to g6, smothered checkmate. What if knight goes to d7? What's the quickest way for white to win? And clearly white is up a queen, he's winning. But what's the quickest way for white to win the game? If you can find the winning sequence, write it down in the comments below, let it be our puzzle of the day. Perhaps the most common question that people ask me is what to do in the middle game, how to compose the right plan, because very often in an opening you just develop pieces, castle, that's pretty clear, but after that it's a more troublesome part. And you can see that in this game black went down really badly without really making any noticeable errors, just by not clearly knowing what to do. So for that reason I've created a course called Top 25 Middle Game Concepts, where I summarized everything, the most important concepts that you gotta know about the middle game. It's like the complete middle game handbook, and if you study it, you'll be ahead of the 99% of your opponents who have little knowledge or very vague knowledge about middle game stage. So if you want to level up your chess in the middle game, click the link below the video and check it out. Hope that you enjoyed this video, and I'll talk to you soon.